Alright, so welcome back guys and uh you know we got a mid-November day. It's getting cold. Fall really went quick and it's already you know 56 the water temps are 56 57 and the air temps are like 45 going up to 55 it's not too bad really i got my dry suit but i'm pretty comfortable i'm not really cold i don't have a big window as you can see it's pretty calm behind me but it's gonna get pretty choppy so i want to try something a little different you know, go to a wreck that maybe hasn't been picked off. And I kind of just want to see what the bottom looks like. You know, I want to see what the wreck looks like. So that's the goal. I'm going to see what this is. I'm just going to do like a quick reconnaissance here while the tide is uh, switching. The tide switches at 7.30. So from 7 to 8, it's really my only window to fish this wreck comfortably because the current does rip. Um, you know, I've been out here before when it was fast and it's fast and I want to see if the blackfish are there so I'm gonna be fishing like heavier structure in deeper water today I'm not trying to find them in boulder areas where they might be foraging I want to find them like in their home so that's what I'm doing I have mostly blue crabs actually because bait store was closed yesterday when I got out of work so I went to H Mart, got blue crabs. So hopefully they'll work. Eh, oh well, we'll see. I think they'll work. We'll find out. You know, most of the crabs that people don't want are the ones that don't have the claws. So it was perfect. I got a bunch of, uh, you know, less weight because they price it by the pound. So, I mean, I think if I, if I quarter these pieces, I'm actually pretty sure that I'm gonna come out to around the same price as green crabs because at least retail green crabs because they're retailing right now for like $6.50 a dozen and these blue crabs were $7 a pound yeah I think I got I don't know I mean I'll count them later but I got a bunch I got like two and a half pounds and, and I got a bunch So I'm just gonna cut these crabs just like the green crabs, pretty much the same way. I'm just cut. They're a bigger crab, obviously. I got got a lot of juice, a lot of goods. I don't think the current has fully subsided yet. This is only a one ounce. But I think probably the most difficult part about fishing in colder weather, especially black fishing, is the uh, it's just your hands get cold because you're you know, you gotta wash your hands constantly. So, that's, I think that's the big thing. All right, I kinda like now. Got a view of the city in the distance. It's pretty nice, sun's coming up. Let's see if we can get one. Oh man, they're here. I'm getting some nice sharp taps. I, you know, I feel like that's a bigger, could be a bigger fish. Oh yeah. Some good taps. Oh, might have to go soon on this one. Had it for a second. Yep. All right. 
That's a good sign though. Very good sign. <clears throat> they are taking the blue crab. Decent. Nice. Yeah, he's probably a little short. Yeah. About fifteen and a half. Almost sixteen. Nice male. His eyes are popping out a little bit. It's pretty deep down there. They are here. They are ready to go. They are like fired up though. I gotta take advantage of it before they move on. Before the current gets too strong. Or the wind even. We've got so many factors at play right now. Like as soon as I dropped, I tried to drop both the underwater and my jig. <clears throat> and they both just got destroyed and I couldn't really pay attention to both of them at the same time it's the only problem with the dry suit is you don't have like access to your sleeve so you kind of have to have like an extra rag somewhere Beautiful female. <laughs> Getting some decent bites here. Dang. Decent, but yeah, see, nice and slow, and he didn't, his, you know, his guts aren't coming out. Ooh. Ouch, he's got a concussion now, though. Good looking fish. Oh, I like the blue crab, it's they, there's a lot of meat on here. 
See, this, the meat is a little softer though. I think that's the only downside. They can steal the bait a little bit easier than, uh, than a green crab. A green crab uh, meat stays in the knuckles, I think, a little better. looking female. Somebody's munching on it. Whoa. Whoa. One more. Ah. Should have waited a little longer. Oh. Dang. He hit that like on the on the rise and fall. right now. Come on. Spike gets hot again. I'll try the underwater maybe one more time. I'm also slightly afraid that the light might scare, spook them. This one's small. Nice little female. See what happens. I am definitely swinging though. It's probably gonna be hard to stay on the exact spot that I keep dropping down on. These fish don't seem to care right now though. Oh man, some good bites going on right now. That's it, that's it. Fast. They're really liking this uh, blue claw crab right now, though. No, they have no issues with it. Might might switch to the. Uh, to a rig. Yeah. Let's not mess with it. Two ounce. I think I'll be able to hold with that. Now 
want a little bit of, eh, it's roughly okay. Maybe I want it a little shorter, but it's all right. All right. Let's see if we can get one with the rig. Goodness, gotta get used to the rig. Brighten the rig pretty, pretty significantly. There we go. It's a better one. instant it's not even hitting the bottom <laughs> they're really small Let's see what the underwater looks like these guys are so tiny all right well what you're seeing now is before when I was anchored before the current shifted, I'm actually on the side of the wreck. And right after I was using both rods and I got all those bites, I tried to put the light on to see if I could see something. But the bite stopped right as soon as I put the light down. So I'm really thinking that the light spooked a lot of these fish because I really didn't capture a lot of fish with the light on. So another interesting thing is I'm not adjusting the sound at all. This sound is actually at full volume. I usually have to lower the sound, but when I guess it's so deep like this and there aren't a lot of boats going on, uh, the ambient sound is very minimal, very minimal. And that could actually have something to do with why these fish spook easily. You know, they're just not used to a lot of noises and lights and stuff like that. In this clip, as the camera was going down, you're gonna see some fish right there in the background. Not really sure what they are, but Maybe bluefish, I'm not, really not sure. And here you're gonna see the side of the wreck. There's some coral there and some uh, rust colored sponges, I think. And I know this is very difficult to see. It's not the best footage, but at least you are seeing glimpses of this wreck. Now I did catch some fish on the side of this wreck, but not as many when I eventually spun around and started fishing on top of the wreck. So now you're seeing the top of the wreck. Now I've, I've already started to spin around, so 
there's a black fish there to the right I mean I again I really didn't see many black fish when I had the light on but I was getting a lot of bites just you know remember I was only fishing for probably about an hour and a half and you know it would slow down it would pick up but I was getting bites pretty consistently it's just it was a very finicky bite and I was really struggling to hook these fish and yeah all of them were small but I do think there's some large fish down in this rack I just didn't catch them or see them so if you look closely you can kind of tell how the current is moving a little bit faster now and keep in mind this is only 45 minutes maybe past dead slack tide and it's already picked up quite a bit and for whatever reason the rig just worked so much better and I really don't know what it was my thinking is maybe that the crab kind of floats around off the wreck a little bit with the rig and they see it a little better and with maybe the jig it just kind of gets hidden in the wreck in a sense but yeah you see a little blackfish there and what you're seeing is uh, just the top of the wreck it, it goes pretty deep in there and none of this really gets picked up on the sonar as you'll see there's some really serious pieces of structure on this thing and the sonar is really just reading it as kind of like a smooth uh, raised object uh, here's another uh, female blackfish coming in on the right into the frame and if you look in the uh, upper right you'll see probably the biggest uh, blackfish that I captured on the footage this day Here's just a freeze frame of that fish again that I don't know what it is. Now you're going to start seeing some more of the stickier pieces of this wreck. You know, I'm not really sure if this is steel or wood. If any of you do know, uh, please let me know. I'm very curious. It's pretty cool. It, there's a lot of these looking, you know, arm looking pieces. There's a decent view. I, got, I almost got stuck many times doing this. But, you know, as I'm feeling the bottom and feeling these surfaces with the weight, I've tried to pr make sure that I don't go beyond that top. So, you know, as if I feel the, the surface of the top of the wreck, then I stay there and I don't try to move it. And if it keeps going down, then I get it out really quickly. I don't, I don't want to get it in like a cavern. Here you'll see what I'm talking about. I got too deep on the side and you see how much wreck I'm coming up off of. And then there I got snagged on, I think like a rope or something, but thankfully it broke free. See this color sponge that's on this uh, piece of wreck? I think this is why the, uh, the blackfish sometimes have that golden hue to them. I think it's really related more to the, to the camouflage of some of these corals and sponges that grow on the wrecks. Here's a freeze frame of, I think, a blackfish. Here's just another passing by of a pretty interesting opening in the wreck. It really is just so much to this wreck. I, I only fish a very small area, and I think it's probably over 100 feet of area. So definitely want to uh, come back and try this again. Now, I really wasn't very successful in catching a keeper blackfish on this session, but I did learn a lot. And, you know, that's a lot of what it's about, experimenting and seeing what works and then applying those things you learn for the next trip. So that'll about do it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.